Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a nice quartic equation. We have x to the fourth power plus 2 times x to the third power minus x equals 6 and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method I could probably use the quartic formula, right? So if we can turn this into something like this x to the fourth equals ax squared plus bx plus c right or i mean we're going to start to we're going to try to turn it into something like this so first we're going to try to turn this into something like this and then we're going to do something else to it so i'm going to be adding something to both sides and my goal is to make the left hand side a perfect square and I'm gonna add 2k x squared plus k squared to both sides okay when you do that you're gonna get x to the fourth plus 2k x squared plus k squared and on the right hand side you're gonna have a x squared plus bx plus c plus 2k x squared plus k squared all right so far so good now, the left-hand side becomes a perfect square. That's why we're adding these two terms, right? That's the trick. So this becomes x squared plus k to the second power. But what's really critical about completing the square here is that we want to complete the square so to get a perfect square on the left-hand side, but we don't want to have any x terms or any x cubed terms. We only want the x to the fourth and x squared, and there's a good reason behind that, right? So on the right hand side though, we have like terms. Let's go ahead and add those together. a plus 2k is going to be the coefficient of x squared. We have then bx and then c and k squared are both constant. So we can kind of add them up like this. Now, because the left hand side is a perfect square, or I guess we could call it ps, right, for perfect square, the right hand side also needs to be a perfect square. And that's just perfect. So let's go ahead and focus on the right hand side. A, B, C are unknown, I mean known, right? We're going to be solving for K. So here's what we're going to do. Since the right-hand side is also a perfect square, its discriminant needs to be 0. Let's go ahead and write it down. It's just going to be B squared minus 4AC, right? And C in this case happens to be C plus K squared. You want this to be 0, and you know A, B, C value, so the only thing you're going to get from here is the K value, and this is going to be a cubic equation. So to solve this quartic, we do need to solve a cubic, right? So it's kind of like uh, we're lowering the degree here, which makes it easier. You can't do the same thing with the quintics. Well, some quintics are solvable, but not in general. And there's no quintic formula. When I say there's no quintic formula, some people object and they say like, oh, we can solve it, blah, blah. No, there is no quintic formula. If it, if it exists, please share with us. Okay, anyways. So you can find the value of k from here, hopefully, and then just solve the problem. Just proceed with that, right? Cool. Now, I'm going to be showing you a different method. The second method is going to be super special. You know why? This is a special problem that allows for a very special method. Okay, so let's rewrite the original problem. x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus x equals 6. I'm going to start by adding x to both sides and you might be wondering why and then I'm going to complete the square one more time but this time I'm going to complete the square differently right how looking at the first two terms what do you think the next thing I need to add right and that might be hard to answer so you can kind of do this factor out a common factor so that inside the parentheses you seem to be getting a perfect square does that make sense so i'll take out x squared for example right that's going to give me x squared plus 2x inside that looks like a nice choice right what would happen if i took out an x cubed which is the greatest common factor then i will be getting x plus 2 and you can't really turn this into perfect square first of all it's missing the square of something and with missing two terms it's not going to work because remember in a perfect square scenario two terms have to be perfect squares right so you have something like a squared plus 2ab 
plus b squared. Make sense? That's what you're trying to get. So let's go ahead and take out x squared because that was the right choice. Okay, so we'll take out an x squared and then inside we're going to get x squared plus 2x. Now you have to think, what should I add to x squared plus 2x to complete the square? And the answer is 1. You're probably familiar with x plus 1 quantity squared, right? Hopefully, because that's so common. You should know this. So, but adding 1 isn't adding 1 because there's an x squared outside. So, it's, in other words, you're adding x squared to both sides. And if you don't believe that, you can go ahead and try that here, and that's just going to work. And when we do that, we're going to get x squared. Of course, I want to write that first, plus x plus 6. Make sense? Well, you might be saying, okay, this is a perfect square, but what about the other one? That's a perfect square too. It's just the most perfect square that you can ever get, right? It's x squared. Come on. So what does this become? This becomes x times x plus 1 as a quantity squared, right? Because that's kind of like a, this is x plus 1 squared. So it's the product of two squares. So I can write it as the square of a product. Make sense? In other words, I'm invoking the formula a squared b squared is a b quantity squared. Make sense? On the right hand side, we have x squared plus x plus 6. This may still not make sense to you, but don't worry. We'll get to it. Distribute and you get x squared plus x. And that's just awesome because we have that outside as well. So this calls for one of the best methods that I like. Uh, it's just an awesome method called substitution, right? Okay, we're just going to call this something. x squared plus x. Let's call that t because t is awesome too. So from here we get t squared equals t plus 6. You see how substitution simplifies the process? But of course, it doesn't always work. I told you, this is a special problem. In other words, some people call this contrived so that they designed it so, so the special pro method would be applicable. Make sense? Okay. That's what the competition problems are for. I mean, if you just give someone a random problem, that's not going to be solvable easily like this. Well, it's not easy either, right? Anyways. So now you get the idea. We get a quadratic. At this point, you might just guess and check, right? I mean, come on. T equals 3 is going to work, isn't it? But what about the other solution? That's kind of harder to guess. But let me tell you, it's negative 2. So T equals 3 and t equals negative 2 are solutions. Because think about it. If you square negative 2, you're going to get 4. If you plug it in here, you're going to get 4. Obviously, 3 is going to work. So we get two solutions. But if you don't get that, that's perfectly fine. You can go ahead and put everything on the same side and factor this. And you're basically looking for two numbers whose product is negative 6 and whose sum is negative 1. Those numbers are negative 3 and 2. So you can write it as t minus 3 times t plus 2. Of course, they're going to be the opposites of the solutions. So from here, you're going to get the same thing, t equals 3 and t equals negative 2. But t is not the end goal. What is t? t is x squared plus x. So I still need to back substitute, replace t with x squared plus x. From here, you're going to get solutions. And that's going to give you another quadratic, which is not factorable. But don't worry, we have something called a quadratic formula. We don't have a quintic formula, but we do have a quadratic formula. And a cubic and a quartic, but not a quintic. Okay, keep emphasizing it. Anyways, x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. You've got to be careful. This is the discriminant. b squared is 1. 1 plus 4 times 3, which is 12. 13 all over 2. Awesome. We get two real solutions. They're very real, right? And then from the other one, you get x squared plus x equals negative 2. And when you put everything on the same side, uh-oh, this is not going to have real solutions. But don't worry, it's going to have complex solutions. And they're fine too, right? Oh, come on. We have a whole channel dedicated to complex numbers. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to check it out. Self-promotion, shameless self-promotion, A plus BI. That's the name of the channel that has complex numbers, all right? Anyways, the other solution is just going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 minus 4 times 2, which is 8, negative 7, 7, square root of 7i, divided by 2. Okay? Cool, cool. There are four solutions, and this is a quartic. So it's supposed to have four solutions. Four complex solutions. Wait a minute. Are these complex? Yes, because real numbers are complex too. I know it's kind of weird. We don't call them complex, but they are complex. Okay? Because if you can also call them real. Anyway, it's kind of like calling a, a square a rectangle, right? We don't call it a rectangle, we call it a square.
So let's go ahead and take a look at some results, shall we? And maybe a graph and see what we got is reasonable, right? So here's the graph of x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus x. And the horizontal line y equals 6, as you can see, the orange one. And they intersect at two points, which we found. Those are the real solutions. The complex solutions are not shown because you can't see them. They are complex, right? And here's the verification of the real solutions from Wolfram Alpha. They should look familiar, right? And the complex solutions from Wolfram Alpha. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.